Hello everyone. Today, I want to walk you through how I make the Ablon profile pics. I want to walk you through everything from the start to the finish, how the handles are made, how the tips are made, how I heat treat the picking tips, and also how I machine the picking tips, which is the real trouble when it comes to making tools like this. Right here, I have a handle. That's what this machine here is currently making. It's going to be making 10 of these handles. while the machine is running. That is a good way to get yourself killed. This machine here is going to keep producing handles until it runs out of material, which is going to take a bit of time. So I say we move over to the forge and get the picking tips out. Right here we are. These are the picking tips and they are probably really hot. They have been baking at about 300 degrees Celsius for the better part of a few hours. All right, this is the forge. The picking tips have been baking inside of here for a few hours. So they are probably nice and warm at this moment, but they should have been cooling down. Usually I start off at about uh, 800 degrees and then I quench them in the oil bath beneath there. And then after that, they bake at about 350 degrees, going down to 200 degrees, and then they leave it there overnight. I had this machined on the lathe yesterday. Let me just go ahead and cool this off. All right, these are nice and cool now. And as you can see, there's no warping. The reason why I heat treat these right now instead of afterwards is that if I heat treat them as a machine part, the chance of them warping is significantly greater. However, as they are now in tubes, tubes don't really warp that much. So these are pretty much aero straight, which is shown by the uh, well, they fit into each other. If these were bent, they wouldn't slide together as well as they are. All right, we're here at the milling machine, and this is really where the magic happens. The first step is to machine the tensioner. This is done on a dividing head with this machine, which has a high-speed spindle on it. And this goes up really fast. This is also a CNC machine. It's a CNC mill. But the thing about it is that this thing here is not CNC. I do not have a four axis CNC mill. I only have a three axis. So this is actually quite a manual process. Here you can see I'm milling the tensioner. The first step is to mill it in half, which I've done. I use a slightly bigger cutter for that. Then I mill the tiny grooves that go on the inside of it, as you can see. The next step is to mill the clearance on the back a rather difficult process. The goal here is to create a lot of clearance for the tool so that it can clear any of the wording that will be sticking out of the Apple profile line. It goes down pretty much to the same level as the tube on the tensioner. And it'll be milled like this all around. The next step is to mill the length of the tensioner. Here I need to take it out a little bit of the collar check and when I do that I'm obviously going to lose the position of it so I need to indicate it right back in so that it is in the same direction as the axis of the machine. That is what I'm doing here. I got it down to about two hundredths of a millimeter which is plenty good enough for this application.
A treacherous part about making these is that the end mills will break. It is a part of the process. The moment that the end mill gets a little bit dull, uh, or maybe you don't hit it at exactly the right angle, it'll just break right off. It happens maybe three or four times per making of the tool. Obviously, it has a lot of unsupported stickouts, and that's just the name of the game. There isn't really that much to be done about it when milling these, so it's not really something that's possible to mitigate that much. The tools get dull when milling the steel. Obviously, this is very hard tool steel. It's pretty much the best type of steel that you can use, but the problem is that it's so incredibly hard and abrasive on the tools that they get dull faster and then they break. But here you can see I change it, it doesn't really take that much time and uh, I have a sensor that will get the height of the tool again once it's broken and then you're right back to business. Here we're getting ready to mill the pinging tip. This is probably the more difficult part to mill, to be totally honest, because it is very long, it's very thin, and it's made from a ridiculously hard material. The first step is to mill the tube in half. Once it's milled in half, I take one of the discs that we'll be picking with, and I just test it. This is pretty much the exact gauge that I would use. Just put it on there, make sure it fits. If it does, good, move on. If it doesn't, then this part needs to get remade. Uh, or you just mill it down a little bit more. It's super important that the fit is super snug. If it's a little bit too loose, the tool actually won't work. It has about 0.01 millimeters of tolerance, this part here. So it's really high precision. While I was busy milling the picking tips, the CNC lathe has finished all of the handles. It was set to make 10 rear handles and 10 front handles. The lathe is completely automatic, it can do all of them in a single go, through a single program, and they turned out absolutely beautifully. Alright, all of the components are now done, and we can go and put them together. This is the tensioner, this is by far the most tricky piece to make. And here are the handles. I've already put the set screws in the handles. You don't need to see that. So let's go and put it together. Firstly, we will insert these two pieces into each other. As you can see, they flow very, very, very nicely. There is almost zero tolerance between these, but it is entirely smooth and accurate. All of these pieces are completely straight. Then we can take this into here and this into here and everything fits together absolutely perfectly. This is an alloy profile, and if everything works, it should slide right in here. It should be tight, but it should go in, which is doing, and as tested picking tip, absolutely perfect. Go straight in, and we can manipulate this lock as we see fit. Everything is within hundredth of a millimeter in tolerance. This is an extremely high tolerance tool and it is ready. Because of the special hardening process that I use, which actually takes almost 36 hours to complete, this thing here also has great stability and flexibility. As these parts are very thin and delicate, I take great care to make sure that the steel is as springy as possible. Either way, I need to get this to the mail. See you next time!